Hello mates, this is 2015 Calculus BC, question number five. So this one looks pretty straightforward, so let's do it. I've already pre-written some information there for you. They want, let's see what they want. They want the equation of the tangent line. So if you think that, the first thing you should think is this y minus y1 is m x minus x1, eh? So we need the point and the slope. Nicely, they have told us x1 is 4. So what I did is I plugged 4 into the function to get the y value. So that gives us a y1, which is 1 fourth. The last thing we need is the slope. But we know the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So in the derivative formula that I've written there for you, I'm going to plug in a 4 for all the x's. And we get this. Now when we simplify that, we should get negative 5 on top and I believe a 16 on the bottom. So that is our slope. So we put that all into our equation right here. And there we go for part A. Quite simple, eh? All right, part B. Now K is 4, so they gave us the new equation where k is 4, right there. Now we want to know if there's a relative minimum or maximum at 2. We both have the possibility of the first derivative test and the second derivative test. In this case, I think we'll stick with the first derivative test and see if that works. So we are going to do b. So first of all, we need to make sure there's a critical point at 2, because if there's not, then we're done. There is no relative max or min. So we want to find f prime at 2. Well, we found f prime earlier. Actually, the f prime will be different because k is 4. So take this formula and replace these k's with 4's and the x's here with 2's. So we should get something like this, 4 minus 2 times 2. Ooh, I like that already. 2 squared minus 2 times 4. Oh, whoa, 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 back up, 4 times 2. 4 times 2. Let me see if I did that right. So k is 4, x is 2. K is 4, x is 2, so we get 0 over negative 4, which is 0. So first step complete, we do have a critical point. Now we're going to see what happens to the derivative to the left and to the right of the critical points. So it's kind of a pain in the butt talks a little bit here. So our point is 4, and that's our only critical point. So I'm going to pick nice numbers to put in to the left and right. So I'm gonna write my derivative formula so I don't get confused here. So I'll replace the k's with fours. Okay, I don't think this will be too bad. So a nice easy number to the left would be zero. Oh, do I have a critical point at zero? F prime, yeah, I'd have a critical point at zero because that makes the denominator zero. So I'm gonna pick a different number, one, and to the right, 10. I don't know why I pick such big numbers, but we'll see what happens. So plug in one, F prime at one is four minus two, which is positive, over one minus, four. okay, the bottom's always gonna be, okay. The bottom is always positive because it's squared, right? So I don't have to worry about that being negative. So it's positive there. Plug in 10, f prime at 10. 
the top is definitely going to be negative. The bottom is always positive. So we're going to get a negative there. So at 4, there's going to be a relative max. So where should I write that? Okay, just for space saving, um, f of x will have a relative max at x equals 2. Why? Because f prime of x changes from positive to negative at x equals 2. Bam! Done with B. Let's move on to C. All right. Find the value of k for which f has a critical point at 5. So f prime of x we have as k minus 2x over x squared minus kx squared. So what is a critical point? It's a value of x that makes the derivative 0 or undefined. But we want to have a critical point at negative 5. So that means f prime at negative 5 better be 0 or undefined. So let's plug in negative 5. It's going to be k minus or plus 10. It's going to be 25 plus 5k squared equals 0. So this will occur when the numerator is 0, because that makes it equal 0, or it also occurs when the denominator is 0. So let's take a look, see. So k minus plus 10 must be 0. So that works when k is negative 10. On the bottom, to get a 0, we actually get one at negative 5, but when k is negative 5, that's 0 on the denominator. Is there a reason? Did they limit k's? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No. I'm, I'm not quite seeing at this moment why k equals negative 5 doesn't work either as a critical point. Let me read this again. Find the value of k for which f has a critical point at x equals negative 5. Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that one because I'm just not seeing it. Let me double check my work real quick. So I'm going to plug in a negative 5 for x. So it's going to be 10, 25, plus 5k squared equals 0. The numerator equals 0 at negative 10. Yeah, to me, I would set the bottom equal to 0 to get a critical point. And I'm not sure why. Is there a restriction that k cannot be negative? Is there? Unless the top, let me see. No, the top wouldn't be that either. I don't know. So I will look into that, and hopefully I can give you the answer to that question. So part D, we want to do a partial fraction decomposition to take the integral of f of x. So the integral of 1 over x squared minus 6x dx. So we know we need to factor the denominator. So that's going to be equal to this. I'm going to do some side work here. So the side work is going to be this. I'm going to multiply by the common denominator and end up with this. Now, for those of you who are like, what did you just do? I multiplied both sides by the denominator. 
So clearly those cancel. I distribute this to that and that. And I should get what I have below. Now I'm going to pick a nice value of x because this equation must be true for all values of x. So I'm going to say, what if x is 6? What does that mean? That means I would have a, 1 equals a times 0 plus b times 6. That would mean b is 1 over 6. Now I say, hey, what if x is 0? Because it must be true for that. So now I do 1 equals a times negative 6 plus 0. a equals negative 1 sixth. So I can rewrite this integral. It's equal to, and a is negative 1 6, negative 1 6 over x plus 1 6 over x minus 6 dx. Well, negative 1 6 is a constant. I pulled out in front. The integral of 1 over x is ln absolute value of x. Now for the next one, I still am going to pull out the 1 6, but you technically need to do u sub where u equals x minus 6, du equals dx. Since those are the same, I have it already. I don't have to do anything special. It just ends up ln u again, but I replace u with x minus 6, so I end up with this and plus a c. Now, if you want to, you can factor out the 1 6. You don't have to. You're good. But I'm going to factor out the 1 6. If I do that, something weird is going to happen. I'm going to have ln of x minus 6. I'm just going to rearrange this to get the... Oh, my. To get the... My brain's frozen. To get... Um, yeah, the positive first and the negative second. Because I took out... The 1, 6, but there's a negative here, so I moved it over there. So I end up with 1, 6. The rule, if you have two LNs being subtracted, you actually take the LN of the quotient. So that's how they get the other answer, but you should be fine with the previous line. That's it for this question. Oh, um... Comments on part C. Why don't we get negative 5 is also a value of k that gives me a critical point there. I don't know this time. I have to do some research. So um, maybe I can add it to the notes of this video. That's it.